What I want to do in this video is go over the um, the program that we looked at for creating and using the Scrabble dictionary. So first what we'll look at is uh, how the dictionary is created, then we'll check out how it is used. Right? So basically, uh, we came in over here and um, we, we had a, um, a file, right? and the file was sitting on my Python directory, and the name of the file was sixletterwords.txt. And we saw in class that what that file consisted of was just one long string. Remember what it looks like on the, uh, on the drive, on the hard drive. It's a bunch of bytes, which is one long string. And it had every six-letter uh, valid Python word. And in that string, the words were separated by uh, spaces, right? And so what we did was we opened that file, and we opened the file for reading. Um, when we open a file, what Python does is it has us say a, um, a file handle and uh, we set the file handle, we call it f, and when that's uh, open, when the file's open, f is the way we're going to access the file. Right? So that's the first point. So now f, is, f has uh, access to this file which has uh, one very long string. What we do now is we read the string into memory, so we say let's take f, which is that file handle, and we're going to call the read function on that file handle. What the read function does is it reads the whole string in as a string from the file associated with the file handle f, so it's going to read the whole thing into some variable, right, and the variable we're calling sl, um, that's that long string um, which has the uh, which has the six letter words in it. But what we're not going to, when we start, what we want to do is create the dictionary, so having one long string isn't going to help us very much. So what we want to do is we want to take that string and we want to split it up into individual six-letter words, and we want to put those six-letter words into a list. So we, the way we do it is there's a there's a function for uh, that works on strings, and the function is called split. And the output of the split function is going to be a list um, of the words um, in the original list. What we do is we say in the split function we pass it as a parameter what the separator is between the words in the original string. So we're saying we have one long string which we want to split uh, based on uh, every uh, space. Right? So we're going to take that one long list that has six letter words, each one separated by a space, and we're going to end up, right, where was that list, where was that string originally? It was in SL. What we're going to get out of this thing is the list Z, right? The, 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 the result of splitting a string is creating a list, so Z is going to be that list of all, letter, all six letter words that were eventually in, um, that, were, that were originally in uh, SL, okay? So that's what we have at this point. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to imagine, so we're going to have, in Z, we're going to have these six letter words. For ease of explanation, let's imagine that instead of the original string having six letter words, let's say we're going to have four letter words, because that's going to be easier to explain what's going on over here. So here's our list Z with the uh, four letter words. But originally, of course, it's really uh, uh, six letter words. And in that list, we're going to find all the valid four letter words, including the word pots and stop and tops and so on. And what we want to do is we want to create a dictionary where when we look up the signature of those words, and we saw that in class, what we mean by the signature is the letters in the word uh, appearing in alphabetical order. So all of these words, pots and stop and tops, will have the same signature. What's the signature of, those, of that word going to be? Well, P-O-T-S, what's the lowest uh, word in P-O-T-S? It's O, so the signature is going to be O, followed by P, followed by S, followed by T. So if we take the signature of pots and stop and tops, uh, they'll all have uh, the same signature, which O, P, S, T. What we're going to do is we want to create this dictionary. We can think of the dictionary essentially, it's not exactly, it doesn't look like this in fact, but we can imagine the dictionary sort of being a long list of, uh, of, uh, of um, uh, signatures. And what will happen is what we're going to look for is this OPST. And if we put here OPST, what we're going to be associating with OPST is a list containing um, all of these words. Right? And the point, of course, is that you're going to type in something, <clears throat> when we use this, you're going to type in something that will become the signature, and it's going to give you all of the valid uh, uh, four-letter words in this case, so it's going to come out with a list containing 
uh, pots, stop, and tops. And all of those are going to be over here in the list. Right? Does that make sense? That's basically the idea. So how is this happening? So at this point, we have, um, <clears throat> we have this list Z, right? This list Z has all those words. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go through this list Z. We're going to pick up every one of these words. Eventually, we're going to pick all the words over here, and then we're going to come to the word pots, and then we're going to come to the word stop, and then tops, and whatever all the valid uh, words are. And what we're going to do is for every one of those words, so when we talk about W, what does W have in it, right? What does W really have in it? So W is going to be every word that we see over here. W is going to be the first word in this list, Z, and eventually it's going to come here. So W is going to be moving to each one of these things, right? So W in turn is going to be this one and 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 all, the, all of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take for each W, right? We're over here now, right? For each W, that is for every word that's in the list Z. Right, so list Z is the list of all six-letter words. Here we're dealing, of course, with four-letter words. What we're going to do is we're going to take that particular word. Let's say we end up with the word pots, right? We're right over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the signature of W. How do we take the signature? We'll see that in a little while. But the whole point of a function is imagine we have a function that when we pass it a word, we can get the signature. So W is going to be the word we're working on. The signature of W is going to give us that word. So sig is the signature of the word. What we're going to do is, we're going to go to the dictionary, right, here's the dictionary right over here. We're going to go to the dictionary and ask the dictionary if sig is in D or not. So this is my dictionary D, right, and we're going to ask if this signature, in this case, is OPST, is that in the dictionary or not. Now, one of two things can happen, right. So let's say um, it's not in the dictionary, right, we didn't find it yet. So what we're going to do is, we're going to, let's say the word pots is the first one that we found. So pots is not in the dictionary. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to create an entry for pots in the dictionary. The way we're going to do it is we're going to associate the key is going to be the signature. Why the signature? Because we want this list to contain everything that's equivalent to pots. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, if signature is not in D, then create a new element. The way we do it is we say D uh, sub sig. So that's going to create D sub sig, D sub O P S T, and the, we're going to do two things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an empty list. And then we're going to append W, in this case, POTS is going to be in the list. So the list originally is empty, and then the first thing that's going to be in that, be in that list is POTS. So we're going to put POTS right over here. So the list now has one element. Right? And then what's going to happen is we're going to go to the next word, the next word, the next word. So the next word is going to be whatever comes after POTS, and then so on and so forth. And then eventually, uh, if we have new words, we'll do exactly the same thing. Eventually, we're going to come to the word STOP. Right? We're going to come to the word STOP over here. And we're going to say, well, take the six. So W, right, W is going to be the word stop. Right? So we're going to say, what's the signature of stop? The signature of stop is OPST. Well, we're going to ask, is the signature not in D? Well, that's going to be false because the signature is in D, right? OPST, we found that already when we dealt with pots. So the signature is in there. So we don't have to create an empty list on this side. All we're going to do is take the current word we're working on, which is stop, and append it onto the list, which has pots. So then D uh, sub sig, and that's D sub OPST, is going to have stop, and then it's going to add into it, it's going to add pots. Right? Uh, it's going to add stop. So it'll be pots over here, and so on down the line. It's going to look for the next one until it comes to tops, and then it's going to add tops in here, and that is basically the way this thing works. So the code right over here, this code here, this is the basic building of the dictionary. It's going to go through W, which is all the six-letter words. We've been looking at four-letter words. Check the signature. If the signature is not in here, we're going to create an entry, which is an empty list, and we're going to append the word we found. But if the signature is in the list, like when we get to stop, there's no need to create an empty list. It's there already. We simply append this uh, word that we find onto uh, the key that's associated with the signature. When we're finished, we're going to have a whole dictionary where the entries, the key entries, are going to be the signatures of all the words we found, and the values associated with those entries are going to be lists just like this of all the words in the six-letter word list that are equivalent to that. Now the question is, once we have the dictionary, right, we're assuming we have a dictionary, the name of the dictionary uh, is going to be D, how do we actually use it? So this uh, over here shows us how we're going to use it. Right? We're going to start over here, and this whole dialogue is going to, uh, uh, is going to interact with the user and, and uh, get the Scrabble words. So what we're going to do is we're going to print a message to the user, please enter a word. And um, we're going to read that word, and we're going to check to see if the word is equal to done or not. If the words 
uh, equal to done, well, we're going to get out of the while loop, and we're going to close everything up, save the file, and, and then we're out. Okay, we're going to pick it, we'll see that later on. But let's say the word is not done. So you're going to give me a word, right? Word is the name of the word that you've entered. So I'm going to check to see if word has six letters or not. So if the length of the word that you gave me is not six letters, then I'm going to say, well, that's not good because I only know how to deal with six-letter words. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to print this. I'm going to go past the else, and I'm going to ask you for another word. Please enter another word, and I'm going to go back up to the top of the while. Right? And I'm going to keep doing this. If you don't give me six-letter words, I'm going to reject the word, uh, come to the bottom of the while, come back up, and ask for another word. But let's say you gave me a six-letter word. So you're going to go to the else part, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the word that you gave me, right? Here's the word you gave me, and I'm going to call the upper function on that word. So the reason for this is because the keys that we put into our dictionary, all those keys were uh, upper, upper case, right? Remember what the file looked like. So if you type a six-letter word, which is lowercase, even though it's valid, and we try to f look for the uppercase value, we're not going to find it. So the first thing we do is we take the word that you entered, we make it uppercase, and we call that word again. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take those six letters and look up in the dictionary. And the way that we do it is, well, we take the word, and we're going to now, we're going to now call the signature functions. We haven't seen yet, but we're going to believe it does the right thing. It's going to give us the signature of the word that you put in. What do we want out of this whole process? What we want is we want the list of all the words that are equivalent to that. So we take its signature, and I check to see if the signature of that word, right, because we just word is now the signature of the original word, if the word, if the signature is in D, then print out the list associated with word. So that's how we're going to get all the words associated with it. Otherwise, if word was not in there, this is false, we're going to come to the else, and we're going to say word is not found, and then we're going to ask you for another word, and we're going to go around and around and around. So that's the way this thing works. How do you get out of here? Well, what happens is, when you tell me that you're done, right, when the word you read, when the word you put in here, either over here, or over here is done, I come back up to the top and say, well, the word, in fact, is done. I skip out of the loop, because I'm only going to be in the loop as long as this is true, as long as the word is not done. Once word is done, I'm going to come down here to the bottom, and I'm going to open this SL words. It's simply a file that I created. It stands for six-letter words. And I'm opening up as write binary, because I want to take the whole dictionary that we created, and I want to pickle it, right? The reason I want to pickle it is because I don't want to have to recreate it the next time I come into the list, right? So we pickle that. And um, the way we use the pickle, we do a dump, right? And so we dump it, and, um, uh, and what do I pass the dump? I pass two parameters. How do I know? Because I know how to use pickle. What do I pass to it? What is D? D is the dictionary, and F is the handle of the file that I'm writing it to, right? So F is this file, single letter words, uh, six letter words, and we're going to pickle into that file. When it's finished, we simply close the file and we're done. The only thing that's left to talk about here is how we got that signature, because we use the signature here, we used the signature before. How do we use the signature? And that is very simple. We actually saw that before. And here's the signature function, right? So the signature function is defined in the following way. Uh, we pass into the signature function a word, right? That's W. And what we really want to do is we want to take the word and we want to create the letters in that word. We want to return the letters of that word in alphabetical order. So the one that we saw we've been playing with is the word stop and so on. So let's imagine we're dealing with four-letter words and we take the, the string stop. So we're going to get S-T-O-P, and that's coming in as a string. So I can't sort a string. Why can't I sort a string? Because a string is not mutable. I can only sort things that are mutable. And so what I do is, I take this string, this is my W, this comes in as my W, I want to get its signature, so um, I say, take this W and create W1. What is W1? W1 is a list of W. This actually works. This I can simply say, I can give it some string, and calling the list function on it simply creates a list with all the words in W as separate entries of the list. So W1, W1 is going to be a list that has each one of these letters separately. So it's going to have an S, followed by a T. Right, it's going to be the string T, followed by the string O, followed by the string P. Right? 
So it's a list containing those things. And now, since a list is mutable, I can sort it. When I sort it, I'm going to get a list. I'm going to sort. I'm going to get the list in uh, the same list in um, all the letters in alphabetical order. So that's going to give me what? That's going to give me a list containing. These are all going to be characters. I just going to be the O uh, followed by P followed by S followed by a T. Right? It's sort of this list. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this list and make it back into a uh, make it back into a string. So the way that we do this is we use the join function. And the join function, the way the join function works is the join function is going to take a list as a uh, parameter. So it's going to take this list over here and it's going to put every value, every element in this list is going to sort of concatenate them together with this character as the separator, right? But this character, this is not a space. This is just two quotes one next to the other. There's no space. So the effect of this thing is going to simply make a string that's every, that's O, P, S, T has been concatenated, and that, of course, is going to be the signature of the original word, which was stop, and that's what we return. So this is how it works, and then everything sort of hangs together. Um, the only thing left is just to explain the very beginning where we ask if we should construct the dictionary or not, and let's just take a quick look at that. So let's just go back to the beginning and see what was going on uh, that we missed, and that's basically right over here. At the very beginning, we asked our user, uh, what do you want to do? How do you want to get the file of the Scrabble words? Do you want to create it uh, from scratch, or do you want to load it in? So if the user types in a C, uh, that means this is the first time they're using our program and they want to create the file, Otherwise, if it's been created already, then we save it as we saw before. We're going to create it as a pickle, and then we just want to load the pickle file. So mode uh, is just a variable name I'm using to get a C or an L. Um, I'm going to take the uh, variable mode. I'm going to upper it because uh, it could be that my user ended a lowercase uh, letter. So if they entered C, that means they want to create the file. Well, that's going to take us through this creation of the diction that we saw before. Right? This is the first time that we're going to use it. But let's say the user entered an L, right, right over here. So mode is going to be an L, which means they want to load an existing file. So this is going to be false, right? The upper is not going to be C. We're assuming that no one's going to try to mess us up. So they're only going to give us an L or a C. So I'm going to come down over here uh, to the else part, and the else part is going to load in a pre-existing uh, dictionary. And we're going to take a look at that right now. And here's basically how the uh, else works. If you tell me that you want to load from an existing um, file, I simply say, OK. I'm gonna, I know where I stored it, because I stored it in a file called uh, single uh, six-letter words. And so I open that file. How do I open the file? RB stands for read binary. And how do I load a pickled file? I simply say pickle.load. And what do I give it as a parameter? I give it the file handle of where I'm bringing it from. And at this point, when this thing is finished, D, which is the name of the dictionary, instead of being created once again, is simply going to be uh, un unloaded from the original pickle. And that is the whole story. That's the way it all works.